So now that you're holding that, you turn the key on. Just one click. Is it on? No. No. Is there lights on the dash? Do you see any lights when you turn the key on? Is there lights up there? Yeah, two lights. Two lights? Okay, so now there's this silver switch right here. Turn it up. Now you see the button over there? This one? Yep, push that button. I did. You did? Here, you're not pushing this hard enough. Push push the clutch hard. Down all the way to the floor. Now push the button. Let go! Let go! Good job. And that's how you start this one. Alright, so I wanted to point out what I was doing here. You guys can see this little bit of green that's coming. You notice over here, this is the patch that I did last night. You notice there's not any green. Uh, you come through and dig your beans up, and as long as you go the right speed with this thing, you don't tear them up, but you kill that stuff. There it is, we're gonna kill it all. Except for that little, little cute rose. You guys see my little cute rose of beans? Yeah. They're coming. Nope, we won't kill the beans, honey. Got both of my helpers today. But yeah, that's what we're accomplishing. Um, this first pass, you gotta take it easy. But then uh, the last pass, you're going like 10 mile an hour. Just hold on to the seat. Do what you can, so that's what we're doing.
piece of ground that is white. It looks kind of funny. But uh, that ground over there, the reason that it's like that, what turns it white, is bleach. So this guy has had a septic problem for a number of years. I never even used to have this to be a ravine. Um, but all of a sudden it started draining. You see the low spot right here. That's where the septic overflows and drains down through here. And you notice all the grass? It's dead. I can't keep grass growing in this ravine because it's bleached. But look what does grow here. Weeds. That's it. You got burdocks and button plants and thistles. And so this is one of the things that I deal with. I was, I was going to say, if you guys don't know what that is, you've never farmed next to a bar. I don't know. Yeah. So that's just a wonderful thing when the only thing you can get to grow in your ravine and your organic field is weeds. It's just great. That's right, honey. Hey, my seven-year-old even understands that. I'm headed over to my next field. Uh, this is my brother's uh, hay crop. That's all Timothy out there. Uh, two years ago, two winters ago, there was really hard winter, really cold, and we had everybody around the neighborhood lost a lot of their hay ground. Just nothing came back. Uh, it was too cold for it. He came and overseeded with some Timothy because his horse customers just love it for whatever reason. It's, Horses must like it. I don't know, I don't get involved in that too much. I just know that the horse people love it. And uh, I wanted to point out, look at the tonnage that he is gonna get off of this field. I am not looking forward to, to mowing this by any means. You know, and it's all gonna be within a day and day span, you know, we just we gotta get it done. So 30 acres, and I mean that's gonna produce produce some bales. Let me tell you something. See the dead spot right there? So when we were getting chicken litter last year for the corn crops, we had a trucker come and they're supposed to have been calling us. We we're having them dump it down there, kind of by that tree there. Well, they just come in and dumped it right there in the middle of my brother's hay field. So that was awfully nice of them. I tried to scrape it up the best I could, he seeded into it, but it just, all that's growing there is dandelions and they're like, five times taller than any dandelion in the sea, so. <laughs> That's all, moving on. Do you see that shit? Man, that does not look like fun. Why is it gonna grow so good? Just stop it. All right, so I got a funny story for you guys. Went 
this way. You can't see it, but he came in this way into his hay field because he had just uh, failed him. I don't know what he was doing. It doesn't matter what he was doing. It's his damn field. He can do whatever the hell he wants to do. So the cop comes out of his house in his car, you know, off duty, drives down all the way around my field two times. Not, wasn't even driving in the rows, just knocking the corn over. So uh, I get up the next morning and I hear about what what happened because my brother seen him driving through the field and wonder what the hell is he doing? Well, I'm not going to go see. Tell Tim he can deal with it. He's driving through his field, which is probably what I would have done too. But, uh, so I uh, come up here the next day in this tractor and he won't answer the phone or won't answer the door again. He's there. Lights are on, cars. Well, I guess the car's in the garage. He hides the top car. But anyway, I go, uh, I'm pissed. I mean, you're driving through my field. You basically just took a joyride through my field for no, for no reason. So I call the cops on. It's either that or going and doing donuts in his yard. And if he wasn't a police officer, that's probably what I would have done, to be quite honest. Uh, but I figured, you know, since you're a cop, we'll, we'll go with it the proper route. So I called the cops. I fucking pressed charges on his ass. Uh, and the way it come out to it was because the police officer that came here and talked to me, he, 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 he called the guy and he answered the phone. And so he, he called the cops on me. He said that somebody was outside revving his engine in a tractor, revving his engine. You come up and you leave him at like 1200 RPMs with the straight pipe, it's kind of loud. I wasn't revving the engine, he's just a pussy. Dude, dude, there's the guy, he's so scary. He revved his engine on his tractor. So anyway, um, I pressed charges on him. I don't know whatever came out of it, they didn't tell me. But I was able to prove that it was gonna be X amount of damage. And it wasn't felony charges, but it was enough to let him know. And the cop that talked to him that was here called him. And he said, you know, Tim just wants you to come out and talk to him. Because I know the cop. The cop that came to say it Known him, played paintball with him. My brother used to work with him. He worked with him. Anyway. Um, Craig called. He said, look, Tim just wants to have a conversation with you. You know, you guys need to come to a common ground. He tells Craig that he, that wasn't me. What do you mean it wasn't you? So then me and Craig went and took some pictures. And I told him, I said, look, I've been trapped my whole life. I could follow a car driving through some grass. Come here and walk and look at this. You know, and he's a hunter too. He's actually hunted the land pretty fast. So he he comes up over here and I said, look, look at these tracks. They back out of his um, um, they back out of his uh, garage here. They do a U-turn, they drive directly through this into my field. And then they come back out of the field into the garage. Tell me they don't. And he said, there's no argument with you about that. I said, and now you know what type of person he is. I said, me and you both know what type of person he is. All right. I am really glad that I found this. That's a guide wheel for a cultivator for a WD-45. fell off last year while we were cultivating. Knew it was here somewhere, could not find it. Plowed it up, I guess, or something, I don't know. Or didn't plow it on if, if you were paying attention to any of my planning videos, you've seen the bridges. They were on purpose. Um, just to fill them in. Another thing I wanted to mention was soybeans, you really only have to plant a half inch thick or deep as one. These soybeans we planted uh, about an inch and a half deep. And a lot of that has to do with the conditions that I've had. They were perfect. Uh, I had nice soft dirt, and so the beans were going to be able to get up through it. And then I don't want the roots in your hole digging too many of them out. So when you plant them a half an inch, you really you work a lot of the. Uh, you work more of the beans out than you want to see while you're rotary hole. So I like to plant them a little bit deeper in the rotary hole than they do. 
come out of the ground, the faster it is at competing with the weeds, and it's this wonderful theory, and blah, blah, blah. First thing you find out plant weeds is they don't compete with weeds. It's an urban myth. It's a legend. Like, that's not a thing.
not sure, but I'm pretty sure that's that's rain right there. I haven't looked at my radar yet, but uh, this morning everything was going kind of north east. So as long as it's still going that direction, I should be good. If you look there. That, those aren't rain class, not gonna. If that drops in, it's gonna be a couple sprinkles. It's that there. That look, that's, oh yeah, that's definitely a rain right there. Definitely. I'll keep you posted. here you can see that's rye up there it's a little bit different than the grass that's the plug that I had I gotta get down here with the loader and get cleaned up but uh, um, the rye there I just needed a ravine there because we were having a washout and then up on top right there too there's that little I call it a finger sticking out um, I left this rye here for a couple of reasons uh, main one being is rye creates an enzyme as it grows that deters other weeds, basically. Um, rye does not like stuff encroaching on its territory, trying to get its nutrients and stuff. So uh, it's, it's a pretty good tool for the organic farmer, knowing that. Um, so anyway, I planted that in there so that it gets nice and enzymey, so that when I plant the uh, grass and everything in there, now you got to plant extra grass because it won't come up as good either to begin with. But um, it will it will fight through that enzyme. But there's certain weeds that will not. Uh, so basically, I left that there to get all the the, the the fun stuff in there to kill the weeds off, and then uh, we'll plant the uh, grass in there and get the grass coming up real thick. And, have a good chance of not having a ravine full of weeds. I, uh, I also like to leave a little bit of rye on the edges of my ravines when I plow. That way any, it deters stuff from growing out. I let that stuff grow up and I plant right through it and uh, usually harvest the crop out of it. But um, I've noticed a big difference in the stuff growing out of the ravines and just having to do less tillage around the ravines. So. Another little tidbit of stuff that I've learned over the years here. Now this is bullshit. I'll tell you where you can take your mask and shove it. Huh. Something missing here. I wonder where that's at. Don't know. Hopefully I find it. I'd like to be able to weld that back on. 
Okay, so I've been going through this video and everything's been looking really good and I realize I'm not really showing you guys the BS that you gotta deal with along the way. Um, so this is about every 30 acres or so. You gotta come through and get all of this stuff. This one here, it's starting to turn now, but it was getting, you know, you come out here when I started digging at it. There's just junk and it's, it's usually plastic and stuff that's blown down into the fields from the highway that I have to deal with. Uh, this one right here though, this was actually a root or something. Grabbed a tree root, looks like. Wrapped up in there pretty good. So anyway, I figured I'd add that. This usually takes me like 20 minutes to go through them all, maybe. Uh, maybe even half an hour depending on how bad they are but about every 20 30 acres you got to stop and do this okay we're good to go again for a little while I really hope I get to find that the only thing about it is that outside roll rides about right here so that's in the middle where it's not as important if it was on top of the row I would have done something there to get Let's just say I'm glad that I didn't have to take that apart. It wouldn't have been too bad, I guess, but just glad I don't have to. Moving on. here to greet me whenever I come back we let the tractor idle for a little bit and cool off it's been a what is going on huh. that's what's going on I can't see it. Anyway, it's been a long few days. It's been a long couple of weeks, really. And uh, today was no exception. I don't know what is going on with my phone here. Today was no exception. We, uh, or I spent about 14 hours in the tractor. And focus. What's that? It's on now, boy. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. Well, that's a good way to end a video. Oh yeah. It's very dark and you can't see much, but everybody knows what it is. Is it? Who knows? For a ride. Alright everybody, thank you for watching. I think it's Tuesday night. I've lost track at this point of what day it is. Um, but we're gonna... I don't think you can hear ya. But we are going to... Uh, Let's just say it's going to be a miracle if I get this edited. I try to make it so you guys uh, kind of see what I'm doing in real time. and um, I'm just trying to keep the videos going. So, Like I said, I hope everybody enjoyed that. And I'll get you one last clip of Bob driving by. My phone is just absolutely... Oh, I don't have the patience for it right now. Thank you for watching. Hope to catch you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.